What is up guys? Welcome back. Today I am very excited to announce that we have week one of the NPL Miners season three. This week we are taking on Parker aka Clover48 and the Temple Rowlets. Let's go over his team really quickly. You'll see it come up on the right side. We have Jirachi, which is one of his Zemons. Clefable, Mamoswine, another Zemon, Raikou, Tentacruel, and his final Zemon being Dragonite, Chandelure, Mega Beedrill, Shiftry, Gothitelle, Halucha, and Licky Licky. Now, analyzing this team, looking at it right away, I noticed that I do not have switch-ins to two of his mons, being Chandelure and Mega Beedrill. If Chandelure comes choice specs, I can't switch into it, and if Mega Beedrill just comes, period, Again, I cannot switch into it at all with the team that I have. If you guys do not remember our team, make sure to go check out my team builder. Uh, it is a little bit earlier. I'll probably leave a link to it in the description down below. Uh, as well as a description to all the other coaches in the NPL Miners this season. So make, tr make sure to check them out, including my opponent. But this is the team that we have. Uh, one of the mons you can't see because of the layout that I'm using for the NPL Miners. But uh, we'll get to it when we get to it. It's actually one of the most important members on the team. Uh, we are having the team builder and the battle in the same episode, so um, that's a little bit new. I'm going to be doing both in one, but let's start off here with Kieran Black, Chilidos. We have Steelium Z. As you can see, his team is kind of uh, weak to this mon. Nothing really switches in on, on Fusion Bolt too well. The things that do are Raikou uh, and Shift Tree, neither of which want to take a Dragon Claw from me. Uh, and the only other thing that could really switch in is Licky Licky. I guess that could come as a wall to my Kieran Black if it really wants to. Uh, he's got a Jirachi, uh, and I just want to hit that thing with a Fusion Bolt, I guess. I do have other checks to his Jirachi, so I'm not too worried about it. Clefable is the thing I really want to catch off guard with a Steelium Z uh, with a Corkscrew Crash from Iron Head. Um, if he's anything other than Babiri Berry, I always Oko. Uh, unless he's absolute max defense, then if he's at full, I do not Oko. But if he has even the slightest amount of damage on him, I do take him out. So... That's why that's there. Fusion Bolt hits the Tentacruel for super effective damage. Uh, it hits the um, Halucha for super effective if it feels like it can switch in, uh, which it shouldn't feel like it can. And Iron Head is also there for Mamoswine. If I can hit that thing with a Corkscrew Crash, it is dead. It is gone. We also have enough speed on this uh, Kieran Black to outspeed uh, Mamoswine, Dragonite, uh, all of his base 80s, basically Chandelure. He's got quite a few of those. Shift Tree as well. So uh, that's why this speed is 285. Uh, the rest I poured into attack and made it adamant because I have all physical attacks. And uh, of course we have 20 HP just uh, pouring it in uh, the rest. I should have probably made this an odd number HP. I don't know why I did, didn't do that. But anyway, I have Roost on this set just in case I'm forcing switches. So that's nice. Next up we have our first Choice Scarfer on the team. Yes, that's right. We're bringing two Choice Scarfers. I have Choice Scarf Flygon. And I actually messed up during uh, prep because this defense EV should have been here. Um, you'll see during the battle if it made a difference or not, but, uh, this 285 means that I speed tie with a max speed Beedrill. Not that I th thought he would bring it anyway, max speed, uh, but it also meant that I could outspeed max, uh, Scarf Mamoswine at max speed. Uh, I could outspeed, uh, Scarf Chandelure, Scarf, uh, Dragonite. Once again, all of his base 80s. That's initially why I made it 285, but I wanted 286, uh, realistically because I wanted to outspeed a max speed Beedrill, even though I thought he wouldn't bring it. The rest was an attack. Adamant Earthquake does a lot to his team, actually. You look at Jirachi, uh, Raikou, Tentacruel, Chandelure, Beedrill. None of them want to take an Earthquake, so uh, this is a very strong mod to have this game. U-turn for momentum, of course, Dragon Claw to be able to hit the Dragonite uh, as a last-ditch effort if it got up a Dragon Dance. And Defog was here just because he does have methods of spike stacking me uh, with Tentacruel. Uh, as well as Mega Beedrill, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't have spikes up on my side because that would be really, really bad. Uh, and Jose, in a, one of our mock, in one of my mock games, I had like four for this battle because I was not confident about this matchup at all. But in my very first mock game, I got uh, messed up by a toxic spike, so I wanted to make sure to have Defog on this uh, on this team. Next up, we have Dom's Game Room. This was Diglett Dreams, by the way. Dom's Game Room, the Necrozma. We are bringing a Rocky Helmet set this week. Psychic, Earthquake, Morning Sun, and Stealth Rocks. So, uh, my special attack is actually still higher than my attack, even if I make it um, a negative nature. So, I decided to bring Psychic and Earthquake uh, and go minus speed because I didn't really need the speed this game. I was still faster than Clefable, which is something that I, I could switch in on comfortably. Uh, everything in defense because I wanted something to take on his... Um, Mainly, his Halucha was the big issue for me, and I also wanted something that could take a hit from Mamoswine and Dragonite, if need be. Uh, Psychic was there to just hit his team neutrally, things like Tentacruel for super effective damage, as well as uh, Beedrill. 
And Earthquake was there to hit everything else. Like I said, ground coverage deals with this team so, so well, as you guys will see. Um, Psychic, uh, like I said, for everything else. Morning Sun was there because I needed recovery first. Second, if his Beedrill wasn't against me and it decided to go for a U-turn, uh, I could get back about 90% uh, of the damage that he dealt to me with his U-turn uh, by going for Mo Morning Sun, and then he would no longer be in with his Beedrill. So... Uh, that's why that's like that and stealth rocks of course as you can see hinder his team quite a bit break the multi-scale on the Dragonite uh, heavily damage the Chandelure the Mega Beedrill uh, Chip down the Mamoswine the Raikou uh, as well as the Haolucho, which is very useful so and it would also give me an indication whether or not he was uh, a, a ma uh, Magic Art or an unaware Clefable if he brought it so that's that next up we have JV Productions the Bisharp max attack uh, Jolly Nature, this is our second Scarfer, guys. We have Defiant on here because he does have a form of Defog. It's Beedrill. I know it's not, uh, it's not the most reliable, but, I mean, realistically, am I really going to run Inner Focus or Pressure? I, I guess I could have run Inner Focus, uh, for Jirachi if it really came down to it, uh, to Iron Head flinches, but he had to be a Scarf Jirachi anyway, and I had an answer to that in Necrozma. Yeah, by the way, Necrozma was also here to handle Jirachi if it wanted to continuously, uh, go for Iron Heads. So that was there and uh, Bisharp with this speed is enough for a uh, this one I got correct actually was enough for an adamant B drill I could outspeed it at max speed and it hits 389 we hit uh, 390 max attack a little bit in HP and defense obviously those don't matter uh, knockoff is there for the majority of his team of course to get rid of items uh, after rocks it does Oko um, Mega Beedrill, and it does a lot of damage to Jirachi. It doesn't necessarily Oko it because I'm not a, a Life Orb set or a Choice Bandit set, uh, but it would do a lot of damage. Uh, and also, if I got the Clefable down low enough, I could just start spamming Knock Off on his team realistically. Halucha, Halucha and Clefable were the only real issues in the way, preventing me from being able to do that. Pursuit was to get rid of the Chandelure if it became problematic. I could always switch in on a Shadow Ball if I knew it was locked in. Say I Protect with uh, Vaporeon, which you guys will see last. Uh, Iron Head is there because it's also good to spam against his team. It's the same reason I have Iron Head on uh, Kieran Black. And Psycho Cut was there for the specifically for the uh, Tentacruel so that I could hit it for super effective damage, but as well the Halucha because I do outspeed the Halucha at max speed as well. So I can hit that for super effective damage. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much our Bisharp set. Our next set, the one that's hidden, is our win con this game, which is Air Balloon, Lucario with Agility, Earthquake, Iron Tail, and Ice Punch. You look at his team, again, nothing really wants to switch in on an Earthquake. What does? Dragonite, Shift Tree. Both get hit for super effective damage with Ice Punch. Iron Tail is there to Oko the Clefable, if need be and uh, as well deal heavy damage to the Halucha if I needed to, uh, and the Gothitelle, and the Licky Licky, so that's why that's there. Also, I'm Air Balloon because if, I, if he gets a kill with Mamoswine or Beedrill, I can come in on either one after the kill and set up an agility for free because they can't hit me with their ground moves. They have to break my balloon first. So I'm also steadfast on this set uh, specifically for Jirachi because even at plus two, I do not outspeed a max speed Scarf Jirachi. So, uh, I wanted to make sure that I couldn't get uh, Iron Head flinch down. He would raise my speed every time he would flinch me. So, uh, that was the idea behind this set. Uh, of course, Earthquake uh, looking like a win con this game, whether it be on this mon or on Diglett Dreams. Rise Pool hopefully can come through this game, as we'll see in a bit. And my last mon is the most interesting mon, guys. As you can see, I do not, I do not have a lot of good switch-ins to his physical threats. So, I absolutely needed Vaporeon. The problem with bringing my defensive Mon in Vaporeon this week, though, is that he has a Gothitelle. And Gothitelle traps my Vaporeon and gets rid of it. Unless I'm running Mail. <laughs> yeah, that's right, guys. So this Vaporeon deals with any and all Gothitelle sets. I can roar it out if it's uh, if it's Taunt or... Um, if it's Taunt... Uh, I guess if it taunts me, I can't roar it out, but... If it doesn't get to get off a ton, if it's like Taunt Toxic, which somebody brought for me in one of my mocks, uh, and if it's Trick Scarf and comes in on my Vaporeon, I can freely click Wish because he cannot trick me his Choice Scarf because I'm holding Mail. And then I can just fire off a Scald for free on anything on his team, which is amazing if you look at his team. Like, the only thing that really wants to switch in on a Scald is going to be Clefable, unless the Shift Tree comes. Everything else doesn't want to take a Scald and get burned, uh, especially his mons that are weak to it, like Mamoswine and... Uh, and Chandelure, those do not want to switch in on Scald at all. And a max defense, of course, to be able to have a switch into his Mamoswine, because that thing is a huge threat, uh, as well as his Dragonite if it's at plus one. 
and his uh, Jirachi once again. Another big problem, Mega Beedrill. Uh, see, this is the thing. This is why I brought Mail over Shed Shell, because I wanted to be able to stay in on the Gothitelle rather than being having to, to switch out uh, as it tr tried to trick me a Scarf. Yes, that could have dealt with the problem immediately by switching into Bisharp and just Pursuit Trapping it, because uh, we would both end up with Scarfs again, but I felt like this was a better idea because I wouldn't be forced out and I'd be able to get back my health so I could switch in on Beedrill again later in the game, uh, or Mamoswine, either one. So this was a more appropriate set, I felt. Also, I can pass pretty big wishes off into the rest of my team, which is always nice. Necrozma especially appreciate, appreciates that as it is one of my defensive core. So uh, he cannot trick me on four mons, being Kieran Black, uh, Flygon, Necrozma, and now Vaporeon. So the only ones he can trick is uh, Lucario, and you don't want to give me a scarf on Lucario either, uh, and... Um, and Necrozma. Those are the only two that he can trap with Gothitelle successfully. So hopefully that doesn't happen. We're going to be moving into the game in a few seconds, guys. Get ready for that and uh, let's go. All right, guys. So here we are and uh, looking at team matchup, a lot of things that I expected to come didn't come, uh, like Chandelure. Uh, Mamoswine was a big threat to me. Tentacruel uh, did come, but I was kind of iffy about it. I wasn't sure if it was going to come or not. Uh, and also, Gothitelle did not come, so there's a wasted mail on Vaporeon right there. However, Raikou did come, and I knew that this was a potential big threat to me, so I had to be very careful around it and make sure that I weakened it sufficiently to get off a sweep later in the game. So, let's get right into it. We'll put this on normal, and I'm going to lead off with Flygon, as he chooses to lead off with Clefable. Now, obviously, I can just go for a U-turn on this turn. I get a crit, and this is actually quite important, guys. That crit right there told me that he had no defensive investment at all. So I was like, okay, he has no defense investment, which means he's probably specially defensive. Uh, so let's keep that in mind for later in the game. I'm gonna go into Necrozma as he fires off a Moonblast. He's gonna lower my special attack, that's fine. I didn't intend on hitting this thing with a Psychic this turn anyway. I'm just gonna go for Stealth Rocks as he goes for a Toxic. And this is a problem because this thing can wear down my defensive core really easily. Uh, so I'm going to get right out of here, go out into Bisharp as he switches out into his Jirachi. And uh, I'm actually going to get a very fortunate crit on this turn with my knockoff and knock off his light play. Obviously, that wouldn't have killed regularly, uh, as I did mention in the team builder. He seemed to be defensive as well because of the light play. He was probably dual screens, which would have really helped out his team. Uh, but I do get rid of the Jirachi very early with Bisharp. Now he's going to go out into Halucha. Once again, this thing is a huge threat. I'm going to switch directly into my Vaporeon as he reveals Drain Punch. And that actually does quite a bit of damage with a crit. Does 34%. Uh, I am forced to throw up a Wish at this point as he is going to pull out a switch into his Tentacruel. And uh, I'm going to get my Wish off. Not getting any recovery. I'm going to pass this directly into Necrozma so that he can take some damage from spinning. And I would threaten him out with the Psychic type move and be able to get up my rocks again because they're going to be extremely important for that B drill later in the game game so I'm going to set back up my rocks as he pulls out a switch into his Clefable and I'm um, expecting this thing to actually I go for psychic because uh, I wanted to be able to hit uh, psychic hit everything on his team at this point so it was, it was a pretty safe play now I'm gonna get up my rocks as he goes for a soft boiled which is fine by me I'm gonna lose a little more health both my defensive walls are sitting at about 65% now I'm going to switch out into my Vaporeon as he goes for a Moonblast. I know he's going to Toxic me on the following turn, but I have to get my health back. He actually switches out into his Raikou, so this is quite dangerous for me. This thing is a huge threat, and it's in now. So I'm going to go for Wish, and I'm going to go for Protect to get back the majority of my health. I am not Toxic at this very moment, so this is very good. Going to get back to 92%. Uh, this is a very important health right here, 92%, uh, guys, uh, because as long as I'm above 90, I do not die from a plus 2 Acrobatics without an item from his health. Lucha. So I need to make sure that I'm at that amount of health. Now I'm going to go into my Kieran Black as he chooses to Volt Switch, which reveals to me that he's not Choice, which is actually quite important because now I know that my Vaporeon doesn't die from his Thunderbolt either. He's going to go out into his Clefable and seeing that I didn't see an item, I was pretty convinced uh, that he was um, some kind of berry, but I wasn't sure which one just yet. So I'm going to go for a uh, for a Corkscrew Crash and he's actually Babiri Berry. Uh, this is fine because I can live his Moonblast. It's perfectly fine. I'm going to keep my Kyurem around. Uh, but unfortunately, he crits me right back. Made sub for the uh, the hacks on Jirachi a little bit. 
Uh, now I'm going to go out into my Abyss Sharp. I'm going to threaten this thing out. And now that I know that it doesn't have any defense investment, I can actually freely throw off a knockoff. As he switches out into Tentacruel, thinking that I might uh, go for an Iron Head, knowing that I'm locked in as well. I make this Tentacruel lose its item, and I'm able to go for another knockoff on the following turn. So that's very nice for me. As now he's going to pressure me out again with his Halucha. Once again, huge threat to me. As I'm going to now go out into my Necrozma. And uh, he's going to pull a double into his Raikou, thinking that I'm going into Vaporeon on his Halucha. And uh, once again, I should be able to live this Thunderbolt, but he crits me again. <laughs> and down goes Necrozma. So unfortunately, Dom's game, I'm not putting in any work. I did click Earthquake on that turn. Uh, now I'm going to go into my Flygon, and I'm going to force him out. He's going to go out into Halucha, and I'm going to just click Safe Earthquake because I did not want the Raikou still around at this point. It was a huge threat to me. I needed to make sure that it was gone. If he stayed in for whatever reason, then he got off a free HP Ice on whatever, uh, and then I would have to predict around his Thunderbolt or HP Ice again. So now I'm going to go out into Vaporeon, as he's going to go for a Sword Dance. Again, I know that I can live a plus two Acrobatics. He's going to go for it, and he reveals actually to be no item. Uh, because that did a lot of damage, and uh, I'm gonna go for the roar, and I'm gonna get him out of here. Uh, I'm really glad he didn't go for a drain punch on that turn, because that keeps him in range of ice punch from Lucario after rocks, unless he's rocking a lot of defense investment, so that's really good. Now I'm gonna sack off my Vaporeon, because this is my chance right here. I'm going to now go out into Flygon, I believe, on this turn. I, I, actually, I go into Lucario, because, again, it's mind games with the Raikou. Um, if I go into Flygon, and I click Earthquake, uh, his Alucha gets to set up again. I can go into Bisharp and click, um, and click Iron Head, and I'm faster than it at the moment, uh, but if this Raikou stays alive, then I have a big issue. So instead, I'm gonna go into Lucario. Seeing as he's already crit me twice, I am pretty sure that he's not gonna get a crit on this turn. I know that he's not choice spec, so he's not taking me out with this Thunderbolt, unless he's running Hidden Power Fighting, which would be absolutely ridiculous because I have a Flygon, then he's not gonna be doing enough damage to me. So, as long as he does not get a para, and does not get a crit, I should be good to go. I've gotten everything in range of Lucario. Yes, Drill is in range of an Earthquake. His, so is his Clefable. I don't even have to risk clicking Iron Tail against it, because I know that it has no defense investment. So, I'm going to go for the agility right here. And does he para? No, he does not. And we get off the agility. He doesn't know what's coming, so I'm just going to Earthquake uh, on this turn just to be safe. Going to get rid of the Raikou. Here, he's going to make... Uh, his best play, which is to go into Halucha, thinking that maybe I don't have any coverage for it. Keeping the Clefable alive, because I still have the Flygon. And I'm gonna click Ice Punch. Guys, even if this didn't knock him out, I would just go into Bisharp after, uh, and just click Iron Head, uh, three times. Because I knew that he was no item, so, uh, I'm pretty sure anyway. Uh, I haven't exactly run the calc, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that damage on Vaporeon was from no item, so. Uh, now I'm going to Earthquake the Clefable. It, it is gonna knock it out. And Beedrill always drops to this Earthquake, guys. So, unless he's he's absolutely max HP, max defense, he's going to live. But uh, I am going to get off the Earthquake, and that is going to be GG to my opponent, Parker. Clover48, make sure to check him out, as well as every other coach in the description down below, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. If you're excited to see how we do this season, there are only seven matches, as I did say in the team builder. So, uh, this is a good start to the season, I would say. Uh, big shout-out, huge, huge shout-out, guys, to Jar. Uh, he basically built my team, uh, not really, but he, he gave me a lot of really good suggestions. We figured out Male Vaporeon together, uh, we also figured out that a Scarf Bisharp plus a Scarf Flagon could put in a lot of work, and this Lucario set was originally mine, he just suggested Ice Punch and Iron Tail, uh, over what I had initially. I did have Earthquake on this set, but, uh, this did work out. So, Rice Pool picking up four kills, very nice. Bisharp picked up the other two, actually, both my Steel types got all the kills this week, so, uh, the other members, unfortunately, not doing as much, but Kirim would have definitely gotten a kill if, uh, if it didn't get crit, so, we'll see what happens next week, but... I may or may not be bringing Kiram, I'm not sure yet, I haven't started building at the time of recording this, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's a great start, honestly, I'm, uh, I'm very happy with the, with the way the team performed, and, uh, I'll go a little more into detail next week on, uh, what my issues with my team are right now, now that it's fully drafted, I'm actually building with it, uh, you guys will get to hear my insight on that, but, uh, again, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later, ciao!